And welcome to the Cardinal's Nest. This is the show where we talk St. Mary's University athletics. We've got the three musketeers with you today uh, as hosts. <laughs> Dean Beckman, that's me, Donnie Netto, our sports information director, and Tony Pasquese, our voice of St. Mary's athletics, play-by-play -play broadcaster with us. Uh, we're gonna recap the winter sports. But I got, a, I got yeah, a question yeah. though. Did we set this up so it was oldest to youngest or shortest to tallest? <laughs> I'm not quite sure which way we decided both, to do this. Both, Donnie. We, okay. we chose right. to do both. <laughs> oh, and one other thing, one other thing. Twitter followers, oh. D3 Hockey News, our play-by-play -play man is in a huge battle with Utica in the poll for the best broadcaster. So get out there, check out Twitter, and vote for Tony Pasquese. The number five seed against a number one seed. And right now he's leading by percentage points. So get your votes out there. We only have about, well, by the time you watch this, we'll have about 10 hours left. So get your votes out there, vote for Tony P. So I'm glad you brought that up, Donnie. So Tony, I wanted to start with that because uh, what's that like being in, the, in a contest where people get to vote for you? It's for the best D3 play-by-play mm -hmm. -play announcer. And uh, the, the site running this is airing clips of some of your work, and it's, it's a bracket contest. It, it's a perfect time of year for it. It's a lot of fun, and you're in it. Yeah. no. How it fun is, is that? It is, it's really cool. Um, it was on a nomination basis, and I had quite a few nominations from Cardinal Nation out there. Even uh, the SID at UW-Superior, he, he nominated me as well. So, yeah, that was really cool to just get into the to the darn thing. And now the support that I've had, that the hockey teams have had from parents and all the other teams, all the other athletes. I mean, I had more votes in the first round than everybody but the guy I'm facing in this round. So <laughs> okay. it, it, it has been really, really cool. And, you know, it's I'm thankful for everyone out there because I wouldn't be doing what I'm doing without yeah. them. So. What, what I think is the coolest, besides all the votes, and if you win, awesome, but what I think is the best, and Donnie, I think you'd agree, is the SID is the comments you're getting from the families here um, and, and some of the players. I mean, yeah. they really appreciate the work that Tony does, the work that you do to bring the Gotta games be to careful, their careful though. He's never going to get out of this studio. His head's <laughs> going to get so big. Well. Tony is Tony is is by, by far the best play-by-play -play guy in Division Three. I don't care what the <laughs> poll says. He is phenomenal. And having worked with him now for a year and a half, uh, you know, his preparation, his, his work ethic, I mean, he showed up for this taping a half an hour before we started taping. So uh, that's that's just the kind of uh, kind of uh, dedication he has, and and uh, you know what, he should win this thing. I mean, he really should. He's so talented, and. Uh, uh, if we can get him a win here, maybe he can put that on his resume and it'll take him to the next level. So. Okay, okay, enough about me. Let's talk about the important stuff. Okay, we'll get to this stuff. Uh, we should mention, by the way, we are coming to you from the Jerry and Pat Pappenfuss Multimedia Lab in Aquinas Hall on the campus of St. Mary's University. The Nest, where we talk about St. Mary's athletics. Again, a recap now of winter sports. And let's begin with the playoff teams. Women's hockey, Saturday at 2 p.m. They will host a game right here at the St. Mary's University Ice Arena. Tony, you and I had a chance to call the latest game. Uh, it was a lot of fun that um, got them now a number three seed, is that correct? Yep. Number three seed in, in the tournament starting this weekend. Yeah, you know, it was a 0-0 tie on what was a fantastic senior day. You got Jordan Keeley in net. She saved just under 20, I believe, but 65 minutes of clean sheet hockey. It was really fun to watch, and there was a chance for the second seed, but I think that kind of took, took away from the fact that they're the third seed. If this was a, a typical season where not everyone made the playoffs, we'd be talking about that like it was the coolest thing in the world. And I think we've lost that fact that, the third best team in the conference this season and the two teams ahead of them they split with Hamlin and they tied Gustavus so anything can happen in these next couple of games you know Tony you brought up a really a great point in that um, because all teams in all conference or in all the sports did make the conference tournament you do you do forget how successful this women's hockey team was and and it isn't just because Jordan is uh, <laughs> our producer today but uh, um, you know they have 12 12 wins this year that is the sixth highest win total in program history wow and uh, the you know the the best year since 2003 so i mean you're you're talking about uh, a very very successful team and it does get lost a little bit because everybody made the playoffs but a three seed my gosh this is going to be it's going to be awesome they open up against st ben's on 
on uh, Saturday afternoon, and and from there, you know, it's a it's a winner winner go home. So uh, I, I like our chances. I think that I think that as you mentioned, you know, we've always talked about goaltending with the with this women's team, and we we have two extremely good goalies, and I think that that that's really one of the advantages that they've had this year. You, you can't sugarcoat it. We haven't scored a lot of goals, mm-hmm. and 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 yet we've had, we've got 12 wins, and 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 so I, you've got to you've got to tip your cap to Ari Ziakas and to Jordan Keeley and the fact that we score one goal or we don't score a goal, and we still got a point out of uh, actually a point in, or two points out of Bethel in a zero zero tie. So goaltending is going to be very important, but it's going to keep us in game, so we don't have to score eight goals to win a game. We can get by scoring one or two goals. Well, and against uh, St. Ben's earlier this year, the Cardinals split both games. We're here at the SMU Ice Arena, 2-1 to one Friday night win, 4-1 to one Saturday loss. I also want to go back, Tony, to this past weekend, senior weekend. Um, we had our producer, Jordan Majeski. Uh, she scored her first goal of this season, so that was great on senior weekend. And then, of course, Jordan Keeley with the shutout on Saturday. Yeah, she made the joke that she gets one a year, one goal a year, <laughs> and she finally she, she waited got it as, this long, weekend. As, well, as, wanted, as long as she could. But. I wanted to put in the recap, she scored, it's about time, but <laughs> I figured maybe, maybe I shouldn't do that. But, uh, you know, it was a cool senior day, and, and I think that, you know, it's, it's, it's interesting when you talk about senior days, and, and I always think they're incredibly special because, you know, you've put in all this time whether it be your youth or your high school, but now in college, this is it. Mm. You know, for for 99.9% of the people that we have uh, on our campus, this is their last game. And, uh, you know, so I think it's important. And I always tell the seniors, you know, make sure you stop and smell the roses. Enjoy the day. And then when you can do what, you know, Jordan Keeley did, how how Uh. incredible is that to get a shutout uh, on on senior day? It's just just amazing. And I think that... uh, you know, this is a great group of seniors, and, and, and this team is going to be a completely different look next year without, uh, you know, with really without 10 seniors that, uh, that are playing their last uh, collegiate games this year. But I think that's a good point. So this question is for both of you. Um, you know, certainly the freshmen have had a big impact. The seniors have had a big impact. How have you seen this team kind of come together during the course of the year? Because with as many freshmen that play as the Cardinals have and as many seniors that play, it's had to take some time to gel, Don. Yeah, I think so. And I, but I think that I think that when I look at this this year's team, I look at the the seniors as they've been incredible leaders, and uh, and and that's you know that's very important on a team, especially when you have that many that many freshmen. I think the freshmen have shown that they're very good, and and you know I mean you look at you look at our our leading scorers, they're all freshmen. But but that's only part of the you know that's only part of the equation, and I think like you said, it takes a while to gel. But it takes it takes a, a an, an impressive person to be a senior and and hey, you know freshman, let's you know uh, here's here's what you need to do. Here's how here's how we can get better as a team, and this is what we need you to do. And I think that that really this class has done that. Yeah, you bring up a good point. That's kind of what I was thinking. It, it takes a lot to be a senior in your final season to swallow that ego and say, well, these players might be a little bit better than we are. And I think that they've done that all season long, understanding their role. You've got Carson Sheridan, the captain. You've got Jordan Majeski, an assistant captain. And that leadership is really what's been that kind of foothold for these freshmen that maybe haven't scored enough goals, but the goals (laughs) that they have scored have led to winning hockey. And now, like we said, anything can happen in the playoffs And those seniors are the ones that you're going to have to rely upon because they've already beaten St. Thomas in the playoffs. They Mm -hmm. have those pelts on the wall. They've been here before. And and they know what it takes. And that's the key. You know, I don't care how good you are as a freshman, you're going to be nervous. When they take the ice on Saturday, there's going to be some jitters. Heck, there's going to be jitters for the seniors too, but they've been here. They've done this before, and they know what it takes to win. And I think that that's going to be important is to make sure that 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 freshman class understands that yes, you're going to be nervous, but here's what we need to do, and we need to focus. We take that ice. We got to focus on it just being another game. Easy for me to say, easy for you to say, because <laughs> we don't have to do it. But that's what they have. That's the approach they have to take. It's just another game, and and uh, I think that we're a very different team from when we played St. Ben's in December, and uh, St. Ben's is going to be a different team. And so I think that you know it's it's you can kind of throw out what we did in the past. Yes, we split against them, but. This is for all the marbles, so it really, really doesn't matter. And they just need to go out and uh, and and play the way they're capable of playing. They do that, they're going to be. We're going to be talking about them for a couple weeks yet. Oh, yep. 
Everybody's 0-0. Season starts right. over yep. now. That's so right. be sure to come on out to the St. Mary's Ice Arena 2 p.m. Saturday for that matchup with St. Ben's. And if you can't make it there, listen to this guy online. <laughs> Go to the St. Mary's website and, and you'll find the link from there. Switching out to men's hockey and uh, the men's hockey team. Um, a disappointing senior night last Friday against Bethel, falling 3-2 to two when they outshot Bethel like... 100 to 2. It, it felt like it wasn't quite that. Um, and then uh, they beat Bethel on Saturday at Bethel 4 to nothing. And so now this weekend they're at St. John's University, a Sunday contest for their first round playoff match. Yeah, I think that, um, you know, we talked so much about overshadowing or over, overlooking at uh, the women's team being the third seed. You flip it with the men, the men get their chance. Mm. Okay. In a regular year, they wouldn't be playing. They'd be done. Their mm -hmm. season would be over, and, and uh, now they're they're going in as a, a six seed, and um, you know they have a shot. I mean that's it's the same thing. It's it's you know one 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 game takes takes it to the to the next level. So uh, you know they have a shot. Last weekend was extremely frustrating, in that you know you outshoot a team fifty seven to twenty two. And, and come out on the short end, that's that's certainly disappointing. But I know Coach Egan was happy mm. with the fact that they put together six periods. They didn't get the win on, on Saturday, but they dominated play. Mm. And that's going to happen. We talked about it with the women. If you get a good goalie, you get a hot goalie, you can you can steal a win. And that's exactly what Bethel did on, on Friday night. They stole that win. Then you flip it over to Saturday, and, and St. Mary's just dominated. They win 4-0. And uh, that just showed that that's really what could have happened on Friday. But... Um, uh, Bethel's goalie played that well and, and uh, came away with the, you know, they had to settle for a split. But I think that heading into St. John's, uh, they, they're feeling pretty good about themselves right now. Yeah, and that's just the way the cookie crumbles. Yeah, we outshot the Royals by nearly 40 shots, but when we took one down against St. John's at St. Cloud, much like we will be on Sunday, we were the team that was outshot 50 to 17. So. Maybe Matt Sankner or Connor Close or A.J. Ruskowski, whoever is called upon to be the netminder, will actually kind of show what they did against St. John's. I believe that was Sankner way back then when they got that mm -hmm. big win. And, you know, hopefully we can finally get that four-goal game mixed with the 50-save outing. That's some winning yeah. hockey. And, it's and just, it's been, they haven't been able to put it together, like you said, six periods in a weekend. Exactly. But you only have to worry about three now. Yep. Well, and, uh, you know, you mentioned they played St. John's earlier this year. This year they're playing uh, their first-round playoff game Sunday because they play in the St. Cloud State Arena, right. and St. Cloud State has a home game Saturday. Yeah, <laughs> and, and, you know, that's we, we always talk about it. And I know when we had uh, Ryan Stoyanich on last week, we talked about one of the reasons he came here was we have a rink on campus. Mm -hmm. You know, St. John's has to they're, – they're at the mercy of St. Cloud State, and if St. Cloud State has a game or they want the arena – Th then they get it, and, and St. John's kind of has to, to play second fiddle. And so that's why the game was moved to Sunday. And, and uh, you know, it's great for us because now the men's hockey players can work for the women's game because we have no workers. <laughs> but, uh, you know, it's, I, I know one of the things that I, I do think is neat is that we get so much support from, from our other teams. And you've got baseball and softball are on the road. You've got tennis playing. You've got – so you we're on break. We're on spring so, break, So yes. really – Having the men here is going to be nice for our women's team because then they have some some people who can support them. Yeah. Aside from that, you know, we, we get such great following from the from the community. But uh, you know, from here on campus, it'll be nice to have the men there. I know when uh, when the women play at two o'clock and the men may be on the road, they're always watching the first period or two before they before they load the bus, and and that's important. And I think that it'll be fun to have them there. I know they're going to be doing. Uh, heck, we may even find somebody to do color commentator for you there, Tony. <laughs> but uh, you know, it's 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 an exciting time, and and it'll be it'll be a fun weekend, both for the men and the women. Yep, absolutely. So now uh, we're gonna. Uh, close out the winter sports by talking basketball. Unfortunately, both basketball teams have concluded their seasons. Let's begin with men's basketball. Um, they finished the season 8-16 and 16 overall, 6-13 and 13 in the conference. And their first-round playoff matchup, they ran into 
a really hot team in Hamlin, losing that one 89 to 54 to uh, 64. And talking to some of the players, Tony, it was just Hamlin couldn't miss. I mean, they were just red hot that night, and there wasn't going to do much to stop them. Yeah, you know what? It was kind of the story of the season. Yeah, uh, it was a team that was receiving votes in the top 25 national poll. It was a team that had maybe three of the top 20 players in the entire conference, and they just never lived up to that hype. And I'm not the only one saying it. They would say it too. I talked to a couple players in the pub today. They agree. And it's just like that. They played well. They played a, a, an okay game. They just ran into a team that played a lot better than them. And there were some some stretches of, this, of the season where it felt like, man, that Vegas tournament, they looked fantastic. Mm -hmm. They looked like they were going to turn it around. And then they run into Augsburg or St. John's. Mm -hmm. And it just everything kind of fell apart. So... You know, reboot, retool, come back next year. You're losing a couple key seniors. Caden Freetley, one of those key seniors. But Raheem Anthony is going to be back. He had a, a, a MIAC Player of the Year type season. Mm -hmm. I don't think he'll get that accolade right. this year. But you get your best player back. You've had some really fresh faces. Brayton Beisman and uh, Jabari Sawyer, Cam Mallory. Just really, really quality players that you think can be shaped into some starting all Mayak level level mm -hmm. talent. Yeah, I think I think Tony really hit it on the head in that in that there were high expectations and they and they set the bar high themselves yep. by two years ago making it to the to the conference tournament semifinals. And and I think that, you know, those expectations, while maybe maybe a little loftier than they had than they had hoped, I think that uh, you know, overall I think Coach Fano would probably say that it was a disappointing year just because of, of the overall record. They had some games, Ugh. so many games that they played well enough to win. You look at the, the last Concordia game and you're losing in the in the last seconds, and then you go to Carlton and you lose with you know j just seconds left to send it into overtime. And then I mean it just it just was like whenever something would go wrong, it, it was one of those Murphy's laws. Yeah. You know, and and I think that um, you know, like you said. They lose, they they lose. You know, uh, Stewart and and uh, Caden Freetley and, and Zach Chisa, they lose a lot. But I think that they have some really good underclassmen talent. And you name you rattled off a lot of them. And the fact that you've got Raheem coming back, and Raheem is a monster. <laughs> that guy is. I mean, he he is. You're absolutely right. He is one of the best players in the conference. Unfortunately, this year there is one that is a little bit better in in uh, Palmer from Augsburg. But uh, you know, Raheem is he's the real deal. And and uh, he was a lot of fun to watch this year. I would not be surprised. I mean, obviously, I'd be surprised if uh, he's not all conference. We won't know that until next week. But, uh, you know, he's a phenomenal player. And, and you know, if Coach Fano can build around him, boy, what a great yeah. what a great piece to build around. Well, so. and you think about how he improved from his sophomore year to mm -hmm. his junior year. If he takes even a small step in getting a little bit better, he'll be, you know, really tough to deal with. And then it's always fun to see from one year to the next who does really up their game every year? It's someone. You just don't always know who it's going to be. Yeah, and there are a couple candidates for sure on this team. But to kind of stick on Raheem Anthony, you know, he his hero is Kobe Bryant. It always will be. And on uh, the anniversary of Kobe Bryant's tragic death, he balled out. And he had nearly a triple-double and had maybe the game of the season. So knowing that and knowing Raheem Anthony, he is going to be that guy in the offseason that comes back and maybe adds a jump shot, can get stretch out the floor, get behind the three-point arc, and hopefully work on the free throws. It's no secret <laughs> that he struggled. He'd be the first to tell you. So if he can work on those things, I mean, goosebumps the yeah. thoughts of, of what type of a season they can have and what type of a season he can have. You know, I think the one person that we've we've kind of overlooked and, and really it, it wasn't on purpose, that's for sure, is Noah Frechette. Oh, wow. And, yeah. the, and the season that he had. And it's it's interesting because they only played you know eight games last year. I feel like I didn't really get to know how good a player he was last year. And, I mean, my gosh, he he can play. And, he mm -hmm. you know, he gives you that outside look and... and you know, their ability from the outside, and then you've got Raheem on the inside, it's, you know, they, they have the tools. They just need to be able to put it all together. Yeah. Yep, no question about it. So it'll be fun to see them play next year. Women's basketball, their season unfortunately came to an end. A home playoff loss as they fell to uh, St. Olaf College, 62-57. to And, Donnie, that was a game the Cardinals were winning pretty much all three quarters, 
three and three quarters of the game. Yeah. And then just the very tail end, the last three minutes or so, St. Olaf came storming back and the Cardinals just couldn't answer it. Yeah, it's it, it was a it was a disappointing loss just because they did play so well for three and three quarters of, of, of that game. And and you know, that's basketball. I mean basketball is such a game of momentum mm. and, and and lead swings. I mean we we even talk about the Hamlin game. They were down by you know, 22 points in the second half, and I'm thinking it's just going to come. There's going to be a, there's <laughs> going to be a, you know, a, a rise, a peak from us, and and uh, that was that didn't come, and and you're sitting there in that St. Olaf game for the women, and you're just going, man, we're just rolling, we're just rolling. There were no valleys. It was it was just a, a constant peak, and then you get to about three minutes left in the game, and and uh, you know St. Olaf just took control, and we couldn't, you know, we missed a few shots, turned it over a couple times. And every time we made that mistake or we, we weren't able to convert, they did. And that was that was the difference. It wasn't that we weren't getting looks. We just weren't able to, mm -hmm. to knock them down. Yeah, and Coach Foley, he's trying a new form of basketball. He's trying to modernize this team. And when you have such a young squad, nine freshmen, all of which had big minutes this season, they're going to be inconsistent. And what's the most inconsistent shot in basketball? It's the three-pointer. Mm -hmm. So you hope that as they continue to grow, get more comfortable, understand how to work with one another, that those three-pointers broke the season or the the, yeah. the team record this year with 15 in one game that those are going to start to fall consistently and then you won't have as many of those long valleys that we had this season it's also huge that you get brooklyn paulson back because she's one of the best three-point shooters in the league but you know we've talked about it some people are not huge fans of the three-pointer but it's just true threes are more than two and if you hit threes at a consistent constant level which they have the ability to do, they just didn't show it this year, they're going to win a lot of basketball games. You know, you talked about uh, what, what's interesting is, is the change that you, you mentioned and how we're, we're, you know, we are relying on the three. We tied the single season school record for threes made at 183, and we shattered the school record for attempts, and we had over 600 attempts in three-pointers, mm -hmm. and it's like, it's like, you know, that, it, it can worry you. I mean, you, you turn cold and you look at the Bethel game. Yep. And uh, you're going to have a problem because if that's what you live by, then you are going to die by it as well. And, and uh, you know, I, I tip my cap to, to Jada and to Brooklyn in terms of, you know, they gave us some inside presence. And, and, and we need that. I mean, Brooklyn Paulson has, has become Ugh. such a well-rounded individual mm -hmm. player. She used to be just, you know, like you said, she is a great three-point shooter. But, man, her defensive abilities now are so much better than they were two years ago. And, uh, you know, the fact that we get her back for another year is, is, is awesome. And uh, I, I'm going to say it on the air, <laughs> I think she's going to be the player of the year this mm -hmm. year. And I think that, she, that she's proven that she's the best player in the conference. And uh, I, I, I would be disappointed if she's not. Mm -hmm. I might understand it if she's not, but I think she definitely deserves well, to be player. Well, and the, the fact year. that she's coming back and the work we know she'll put right. in to get even better than she already is. I want to point out something. <laughs> I just want to point something out here. After every game, I am hyperbole. I'm thinking the highest of highs, this is the best team in the world, and they're going to win everything. And every time Donnie's like, no. No, they're not. You've got to calm down. It's one game. I have never, ever, ever, ever heard him talk the way that he just did about Brooklyn Paulson. So that is huge. Yep. And I agree. I mean, she was top three in points, in rebounds. She was up there in assists. She was a phenomenal defender did not ever get into foul trouble well, and then the minutes but, she played i mean she, yeah top five in yeah. minutes as well so i absolutely agree and i am taken aback and i hope brooklyn <laughs> knows just how high praise <laughs> that is because well, we're, we're, hope, we're hopefully using the cardinals nest positive aura on this that's one. right yes. that's right yes because so, yes. uh, and you know what I've got the thing. I've got the bracket. So does this mean there I'm going to win? <laughs> yeah, I appeared on the Cardinals' nest. So yes. I, yes. The Cardinals' nest yes. boost, as that's I like right. to call it, is that's a thing. Right. So yes. that's a good sign. No I, guarantee, I, I, but I, it's a good sign. Now, you still got to work let's, it. Let's think about this. We had Jordan as the as the pro program manager last week, and she scored her first goal of the year. Yep. Okay. I mean, you know, it's Ryan Stoyanich. He agreed to come on. He scored. He, he scored. scored in it's the a next thing. Game. It's, we it's a have thing. good vibes. It's it's good. Juju. Yeah. <laughs> I don't have to worry about it. I don't have to worry about it. But, and, and let's bring it back to women's basketball. I, I've, I've loved the play of Izzy Gettleman mm. and Maggie Newhouse and these freshmen. Tegan Hench coming off defensively. Grace and Harches. Grace and Harches moving from the starting five. Yeah, Emma Miller struggled. has had some good games. She's coming off the bench. I mean, mm -hmm. they, every one of them yeah. does something yeah. well. And they, and, do, and, and they do things differently. 
Yeah. You know, and that's the I mean, Izzy at five foot four, and I know she's listed bigger than that, but she's like tiny, <laughs> but she brings it to the hoop all the time. It's like, it's, it's, she's fun to watch. And, and, you know, I feel bad that I didn't see her in high school because she did play for Winona High and, and, you know, we're right here in Winona, but man, what a player. She's a, she's a lot of fun to watch. She is, she's very exciting. And, you know, so many of those freshmen next year, I mean, they're going to be, yeah. You know, they're going to, if they need to put in the work, obviously. Mm-hmm. And, you know, we talk about that all the time. The off season is really not really off, but uh, they put in the work. And I really think that next year there's going to be some really good things yeah. that could happen from that team. Guys, just one minute. That covers the winter sports. Baseball, softball, tennis. They all get to go to Florida Ugh. here at spring break time yeah. for St. Mary's. So Yeah, they do. And we'll be here. We're but here. you know what? We're, we're going to be here for, for uh, a playoff hockey. So yep, that's, that's, right. that's a good trade off except for the sunshine and the warm weather. <laughs> <laughs> All right, that's going to do it for the Cardinals Nest. We'll leave you with one last message. Go to Twitter, vote for this guy. Vote for the squeeze for the best Division Three play-by-play announcer. Uh, All right, from the Jerry and Pat Pappenfuss Multimedia Lab, for Donnie Netto, Tony Pasquese, I'm Dean Beckman. Thanks for watching the Cardinals Nest. Nest Next week, Donnie and I, we're going to have a special Cardinals Nest where we interview one of the uh, St. Mary's Hall of Fame inductees that will be coming up here in March. So be sure to stay tuned for that. Thanks for watching.